So my name is Lubislav Pivarch. I'm working at Red Hat as a software engineer. And I'm working on the Kubert community project uh, about virtual machines on Kubernetes. I'm, about, I'm there about uh, for two years, and I'm a prover. And the name of the talk, or the title, is Running Kubert with Workloads with No Additional Privileges. So let's start. So what is coming? What is our agenda today? So I'm going to talk about Kubernetes and Kubert. So I'm going to give you a quick crash course on Kubernetes and Kubert. Then we will have a see uh, how is security enforced inside Kubernetes, because we are running uh, with the Kubernetes. Then we will have a look on what is actually enforced by these uh, security mechanisms. And uh, then we have a, a close look on Kubert, Kubert and how it stands uh, with these uh, sec security mechanisms. So what is actually Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is an open source system for, man, uh, for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containers applications. So words doesn't uh, tell much to me. So uh, let's have a look on a few of the images and workloads. So Kubernetes API pro is uh, API based on, uh, on the objects. And these objects are representing a lot of features. And so when a user wants to run a workload, it needs to find what type of object is representing this. And the name of the object is actually pot. So when he wants to run the workload, as I said, he needs to find also the schema and API version and so on, and need to craft the spec of the, uh, of the containers he wants to get uh, from the system. Then he posts it to the Kubernetes API. Kubernetes API can validate the schematics and the schema and we'll store it inside uh, the storage. After that, like scheduler can pick it up and pick a node for, suitable for the containers to run on. So let's, let, let's have a look on the node perspective. So we, we can see there is a node agent uh, called kubelet. The kubelet is watching the, uh, the Kubernetes API for the workload. And after that, uh, with help of container runtimes, it creates a pod. So pod is, uh, pod is actually only abstraction for one or more uh, containers. These containers uh, then share the resources that are assigned to the pod. Kubelet is also responsible for a lifecycle of the pod, uh, which is uh, necessary for uh, some kind of interaction with the system. Um, so that's what we need from, uh, to know about Kubernetes. So let's have a look at what Kubeard actually is. So Kubeard is a Kubernetes extension that allows running traditional virtual machine workloads natively side by side with the container workloads. So if you are on the move to containers, but you still know and acknowledge that you need uh, virtual machines, uh, this is the product or project you are looking for. And so how, how do we uh, do that? So as I said, Kubernetes is based on objects and it's really extensible, so Kubernetes just hooks into the API, provides own object called virtual machine, and uh, we have some web hooks uh, and API uh, that can validate the schema and so on. So user just interacts as, uh, with any other, any other uh, workload type in Kubernetes and post a spec of the virtual machine uh, to the Kubernetes API. There we pick it up and transfer it into the pod, so the workload, workload specification. Kubernetes does uh, some work for us, and we end up on the node. So here are two important uh, things to talk about. The first one is that we get a pod. We call it a virtual launcher. Here we are running uh, components as a libvirt, a Kimo, which you are probably familiar with. And uh, this, is, this is the component which is run uh, for the user. So we don't trust uh, the component. And there is also a second component, which is actually our node agent called Wild Handler on the left side. And this is a privileged container, so it allows us to see other processes on the node. Uh, because containers are just processes, we can mess with them. And this is really important for my talk because uh, we need to do some privilege uh, setup uh, for the virtual machines uh, to, to be able to drop the privileges on the side of the, of the user, so the virtual launcher. So great, so how does Kubernetes uh, 
security mechanisms are implemented. So back again on the first uh, in the, into the first picture. Uh, as we can hook into the API, other mechanisms can hook into the API. And uh, uh, so, for example, there is an OpenShift specific one which is called security constant constraints or a Kubernetes or plain Kubernetes upstream pro uh, project called Pod Security. It's actually not a project, it's integra integrated into the project. And most of the times, uh, this mechanism uh, provides some kind of uh, pod security policies. And these policies are, uh, have a like, spectrum. So on one side, you have like, re restrictive policies, which is uh, like hardening best practices, what you should uh, allow uh, to normal user. And on the other side, there is a privilege uh, policies, which allows for non-privilege escalation. You can do basically whatever uh, on the system. And that should not be uh, assigned to any user. You should know him and, and so on. Um, so the problem here is that these uh, poli policy or security enforcement mechanisms are often not enough fle flexible enough. So. If you need some privileges for the Qbird, for the virtual machines, oftentimes you need to uh, give a privileged, uh, privileged um, uh, access to the user. So he can then actually craft any arbitrary workload with the, with the same privileges or even more privileges than we are using. So this is a real issue and we need to integrate with the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes model to allow normal users to run the virtual machines. So what, what is actually restricted? The list is long. I, you don't need to uh, run through it. Uh, it's basically, it comes down to two things. Uh, it is restricting a uh, few of the features that Kubernetes provides. And the other thing is just plain security stuff which you would uh, use uh, with processes on the node as, as usual. Uh, so we are going to focus on three categories here, or three uh, features. Uh, those are capabilities, selling hooks, and running as a route. Uh, so, so what was the first step for us? The first step for us was actually uh, to have unprivileged networking, because we used a lot of uh, capabilities for the networking. We had to cut down on, on these capabilities. So. Some background, background is that uh, Kubernetes has some default uh, network. When the workload is submitted, it gets some IP address. The container gets interface. And to connect the interface uh, to the guest, uh, Kimu provides few options. For example, sleep, which should be an unprivileged uh, way to do it. Or uh, through, it also provides a way uh, through tab device. But configuring, configuring the tab device is actually privileged operation, or most of the networking configuration is privileged operations. So we need to uh, somehow solve this problem. And at the same time, we need to provide the IP address of the workload inside uh, to the guest. And we use standard ACP. Uh, so how to address the problem is to actually offload the networking setup to the privileged component which is called uh, the weird handler. But it also uh, requires uh, the well-known management tools like libweird to get us, uh, give us the opportunity, for example, to not manage the networking for us, right? So there is an option unmanaged in libweird that basically does what, what, what you need. And uh, this also means that the existing uh, management tools needs to know that there are some cases when uh, you they are losing their privileges and should not uh, implement the features uh, in a privileged way. So one problem stays, and that is that we leave out the NetBind service. And I'm get, I get back to it why it's the problem, but it's actually a problem. So what about running uh, the workloads as non rules So <clears throat> it can be easier setting uh, the user for the workloads, so, uh, setting the user on the container. And then using Libweird in the session mode, what, session mode, what it does is actually tells Libweird, hey, you, you don't have much privileges. Please don't do a lot. And please run the virtual machine as, as the user which is requesting it. So 
Uh, yeah, and that can be that easy, but for, not for us, because some security policies actually dictate you that you need to run as any uh, user, which means uh, you get pre-allocated uh, ranges of UIDs, and uh, you need to cope with that. Uh, which is good, for example, if you are running QMU processes on, on the host, you don't want them to be the same user because they can uh, reach other, other disk and so on. Um, but it has some challenges with containers because the file system permissions on the, uh, on the file system are built, uh, are set on the build time of the, actually, in the container image. And modifying the container uh, file system might not be a good idea because there can be copy on writes file systems. So the solution is to actually uh, use Kubernetes for this and use a feature called empty di uh, directory, which uh, basically give you a tempfs uh, whenever you need it and uh, the permissions are exposed and then you can manage it on your own. Uh, this solves a burden to, of vendors to actually keep track of the file system structure that the, uh, they are need to uh, allow to, to the user or expose to the user. So the next feature you would like to use probably is uh, some kind of storage. So Kubernetes uh, allows two types of storage, so file system and uh, block volumes. And they don't have really uh, standard permissions models. So what basically, basically uh, happen when you are running as a, a non root user uh, you get probably permissions denied. And for this, there is a feature inside Kubernetes which is called FS group. Uh, this makes sure that uh, the files and directories I are inside a special group and you are then in, in the group as a... That, that doesn't work well with all the storage providers uh, out there. And this is a feature actually restricted by some of the policies. So we, we can't use that. And the solution is, again, like manage the permissions inside a privilege component called Weird Handler. Um, so what about devices? Uh, Kim needs to access some of the devices, for example, KVM for accelerating, uh, uh, vhostNet for better performance of net networking. Uh, what about vGPU pass-through or SROV networking? All these, all these things need uh, to... Uh, access the devices. So Kubernetes has this framework or mechanism called device plugins that make sure that cluster sees the resources, scheduler can schedule, and container gets the devices. But what happens when uh, you run as a non root user, you actually don't have access or it's inconsistent. And why? Because they copy the permissions of the host. So based on the vendor you are using or operating system, it, it can vary. So it's not usable, it's inconsistent. And so before solution, I need to mention that Kubernetes actually acknowledged this and has a follow-up on it uh, to allow uh, the access for the unprivileged user. Uh, but for us right now, we need a solution right now. So uh, again, offloading the permissions on the weird handler. But these are the draw drawbacks uh, because we only know few of the uh, devices uh, that uh, we can manage. So if you are integrating a new device uh, through our extension points, then you can fail to do that. So I mentioned we left one capability for the networking, and we actually introduced one another, uh, ptrace, when we were introducing VTPM support inside Qbird. And what is the problem with uh, capabilities and non root uh, containers is that the uh, calculation of the capabilities of the new process that is executing, so the container, is different uh, when uh, you are running as a root as, and as a non-root. So you probably seen this main page. And, and the trick is that you need to use file capabilities, or the first trick is to use the file capabilities to actually, on, on the executive binary, to get the, those, to, so to make sure that the process gets the capability, right? Um, the second trick or the second way to do it is to use unbid capabilities. And it is the better way. And I will tell you why. 
but this is not integrating in some Kubernetes. So uh, again, we need the upstream support for that. So why ambient capabilities are better? They don't require any changes to the images, so you can run out of the box. And some security policies dictate you to run, uh, to run with the allow no, uh, no, don't allow any privilege escalation flag in Kubernetes, which is actually uh, no new previous uh, bit for the process, which means the capabilities are going to, or the file capabilities are going to be ignored, and so you don't get them, so you end up being denied access uh, to operations you want to do. Uh, drawbacks of file, cap file capabilities is that you need to uh, set the file capabilities and require them uh, like always for the workload because if you would not uh, require uh, the capabilities for the workload then the process, the creation of the process will fail because it is not allowed to have the capability that is set on the, on the binary. So this allows an uh, opt-in uh, approach. For example, if you don't need VTPM, we would uh, probably drop the uh, ptrace, but we cannot. Uh, so last uh, thing I'm trying to target is at the C Linux. So uh, keep it enabled. And uh, what's the problem there? So uh, some of the rules were not recognized uh, suitable for normal container T type, which means a normal container workloads should not have the rules. Uh, but the situation is getting better and better. And we have just two pain points there, and that is VirtuFSD, which requires a lot of, a lot of rules. And one more thing is, uh, uh, one more thing is a huge table file system, which, uh, so the policy allows you to create a file, but not a directory, and leave your just you know, like creating the structure inside of a huge table file system. And it's, it gets uh, tricky with the Sony example. So, uh, that's not good, but uh, probably this rule can be upstream. So what's left? Uh, so arbitrary user needs to be used for the workload to, uh, to play with some of the policies. Uh, this can get tricky because the user namespaces are going to be a thing in Kubernetes. So we need to somehow uh, think about that. Uh, also, we are trying to remove the custom policy and only set it when we need. Uh, upstream all the rules we require or use alternative APIs uh, for things we need. So for, for example, for the huge table uh, support, you can use the approach of the file system, but also you can use MFD API, uh, which is not privileged. And yeah, uh, we are waiting for the ambient capabilities in upstream and one more thing we can do all, all we, can, we can do all uh, is to probably switch to restricted first approach and think about what kind of uh, privileges we need for some of the operations we are doing as a management tools or as a emulation uh, programs. Um, that's all. Thank you. And you can get in touch with us with Twitter handle and at the Slack. Any questions? Thank you very much.